Hi there, I'm Timothy Linsdale, video producer and a Christian. Talking about the Utilities Commission bumps up resource mandate. What's going on with California's Public Utilities Commission? Uh, before we start, like and comment on my video, subscribe to my channel, we can keep these stories going. I just see in the paper a rather intriguing uh, story about what's going on with the commission. Now, some of you may know that California has been shutting down power for reasons of fire in the last uh, few weeks, and that's been a big deal, especially for those who are caught up with no power, and many times uh, and probably in the worst of situations. So what's going on? They are particularly worried about a significant possibility of a shortfall in the state's power system within two years. Uh, critics say the extra power is not needed. It, it's, it's to condense it. Uh, the commission is saying you have to have a certain percentage in reserve at all times. Well, one argues you don't, but anyway. But some of this, or no, not some, but all of it is coming from climate change mandates because we are now an independent nation when it comes to fossil fuel and energy resources like that and can produce all the electricity we need to produce but the issue is environment are we damaging our environment at the same time because in LA area there's four natural gas power plants that are uh, cited to be shut down to be retired now, uh, one of the reasons for it is these plants are called once-through cooling systems. They run uh, ocean water through their systems to cool it down. Well, uh, many environmentalists are saying that this disrupts local ecosystems and kills fish and other marine life. So they're saying that's why they have to be shut down. Now, this, the president of the uh, commission... Maribel Batcher, I believe it is, is echoing sediments that it was the most difficult decision I've had to make, and as and it's echoed by the other commissioners. Worried about significant possibility of shortfalls, and but what their decision was, not to shut the plants down immediately, but to extend the use of the plants. That's what the fear is, or the consternation or the heartburn of the day is we might have to shut down a power plant and uh, not just one but four well they've extended them so the argument goes on uh, the order calls for energy providers in the state to sign contracts amounting to new power sources you have to have new power sources to replace the fossil fuel which is going to be solar and wind at this time since we don't have anything else much to speak of. So, on goes the argument. Having to have these new sources, and I have talked before about the problem with our new energy sources of solar and wind because I've seen them. They're massive operations. Now here's the irony of this. They're massive, they take up massive amounts of land. Uh, they destroy the environment that they're put on. The environment has to be stripped bare, which kills every animal out there, for these plants. The wind doesn't always blow. The sun doesn't always shine. Uh, does that not, first of all, doesn't that have an effect on the environment? I just said that. They're worried about the environment this side, and at the same time wrecking the environment on that side. Are we making any sense here with any of this? My word. What else have they got to say? Well, they're talking about the fact that different parts of California will be able to share in the struggle of producing this new, uh, new, new plants. Well, of course, they're going to cost billions of dollars. Who's going to pay for them? The people. It's always how it goes. Okay, the commissioners were persuaded by warnings from the California Independent System Operator, or CASO. They operate 80% of the electric grid in the uh, state that a lack of sufficient resources may materialize by the summer of 2050? No, 2021, a year and a half from now. 
Now, people can relate to that who've had their power just shut off recently, what that's like. Uh, California's peak time for energy is 4 to 9, of course, when the sun goes down. Uh, this last year, they asked us in San Diego, what choice of power do we want to be charged by? I don't know if I can explain that well, but if you pick a certain choice of the way you're built, you're billed, and then you, they're told, well, if you use more energy in this time of the day, it will cost you less than if you use it in that time of the day. And, of course, peak energy is 4 to 9. That's when you'll be charged an exorbitant price versus when you're not. Well, my wife and I kind of have it made because we're retired, so we can adjust any time. But a lot of working people, that's a little bit harder. So here we go. Uh, let's see. It coincides with the dramatic reduction in solar generation as the sun goes down. That's part of the, part of the um, how you're charged. 4 to 9 is more expensive. Uh, capacity, here's a, here's a worry, capacity from imported sources may become scarcer as other states around California start to uh, uh, go towards more non-fossil fuel energy. As that happens, those states are going to start to want to not sell the power they're selling now to California and keep it for themselves. Also, a hydroelectric uh, power that is in the northwest, they may start to not you know, want to share their power, sell their power, I should say, to California, which puts us in a precarious point. Um, uh, Mark Rothelder, the, the Energy Grid Vice President for Market and Quality, told Los Angeles Times if state officials don't act quickly, price spikes and blackouts may result. Uh, you know, the crazy part about all this, we have this technology with our fossil fuels that has gotten better and better and better at reducing pollution. I've seen it in California in the 30, 40 years I've been here. Now the pollution has gone down, down, down. You can argue that probably forever, but you can see it visibly. Perfect, no. But building endless solar fields and windmills is not perfect either, is it? It takes massive amount of production to develop and build that equipment, let alone to practically eliminate the environment they're put in. So where do we go from here? Does anybody have any ideas? Other uh, of the uh, uh, more complaints. Southern California Edison said the shortfall could be worse with the uh, than uh, the energy grid's estimates unless natural gas generation is extended to or new clean energy resources. Now, I, from what I've seen, natural gas is pretty decent on the environment, the use of it. And when it comes to scientific evidences and issues, <clears throat> that is the constant war, isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> over whose science is accurate. <coughs> and that goes on and on and on. <coughs> Certain um, organizations, such as Protect Our Communities Foundation, <coughs> and a, a uh, organization that is against or fights fossil fuel electricity generation, development of unneeded electricity transmission and distribution lines they're against, of course, this came up because there's this beautiful valley in the backcountry that they built a big power line across. A pain, yeah, for the beauty of it. It's a beautiful place. I understand that. Uh, destruction of rural and wild places for un un unsustainable utility scale electricity generation. This is on their website, by the way. Investor-owned utility malfeasance government corruption. Well, that covers just about everybody, I think. But everybody needs electricity, uh, ever more than ever. I mean, our houses are run by computers. Your car are run by computers. Eventually, your car will be electric. Where are you going to get the electricity for that? Doesn't just come out of the air, does it? So the arguments go on and on and on. So what they've done is uh, they've extended the time of these generation plants by just a few years. Um... Uh, it's, it's great, and one shuts off in three years, two, one goes on down. <laughs> the, 
Then what do we do? It's here, here's a quote. It's time to end the use of fossil fuel that is 60-year-old technology. In the interest of public health and sustainability, the Redondo Beach Mayor Bill Brand told the commissioners before the vote. Okay, well, one of the commissioners, Martha Gutzman Aceves, said, I pledge to you I will never support another extension for the once-through cooling plants. <laughs> Okay, what happens when all of a sudden we have no electricity, we have rolling blackouts, and everything's going to crap, your food in your refrigerator and your freezer's rotting. And you can't get your work done because your computer's off. On and on and on and on it goes, but something is going to give. You can talk all day about taking care of uh, the environment, taking care of how we use fossil fuels, and yes, we should be careful. All the people building that stuff and operating that stuff which is supported by us as the customers. All those people live in the same environment we do. They're not aliens from another planet. What are you going to do? Just shut the power off when we already have a whole system that works and we're mixing it together. We've got, uh, we do have the non-fossil fuel plants operating and from what I understand, at times producing far more energy than it's needed. And that was some of the argument in this article was that the reserve was too high to start with. Maybe, maybe not. When we see the power shutting off, we'll, and then we'll know. All right, people, we've got to come together here, or we'll be fighting each other tooth and nail or worse. So if you got an idea, go out there, solve it, help us solve our issues here. Okay, like and comment on my video, subscribe to my channel, and get out there and make it a great day.